Hey everybody, Apostle Ted Dones here. Glad to see you. Hope you've had a great weekend and a great week starting off and everything's going good for you. We've been busy around here. Amen. I'm trying to set things up while we're talking here. We've been real busy around here with uh, the conference just went on and it was awesome. I want to thank Anthony Scott, Pastor Anthony Scott for ministering on uh, Saturday night. That was phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, man. Sunday night, God hit the church. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. We walked through the door before even service started, and the power of God hit the place. The glory was so strong. Bless my precious wife. <laughs> she was, she's being hit by the power of God so much. She, she said, I'm having a hard time functioning. <laughs> she had to run the sound system and handle all the worship stuff. So it was it's pretty awesome. It was a great move of God. Many people's lives were touched. Many people got delivered. Many people were healed. And we just we just thank God for the move of the Spirit. Amen. It's awesome to be in a place where you have liberty and and God's there to meet you right where you're at. Hey, while I'm on here and we're talking a little bit, let your friends know to jump in. We're going to start talk tonight about seeing things from God's perspective, from God's point of view. I did a teaching on this uh, a few months ago, and uh, the tape series or CD series is on the our website, and it's also on our uh, Facebook page. If you want to go to it, you'll see it up there. It just says, Seeing Things from God's Perspective. You can order it online at Messengers of Fire Ministries, or you can call us and order it by phone. Or, hey, even better than that, come set in a service. You never know. You may end up getting one gift to you. We give a lot of CDs away, amen, through the services as a gift to the people. Amen. But let's talk about seeing things from God's perspective, or seeing everything, I should say, from God's perspective. And basically, the reason I started doing this teaching on Tuesday night was we make choices, and the choices we make are affecting our lives. By the way, uh, if you was wondering where I'm at, I'm in my office in my home. Uh, I didn't go to the church office tonight. I'm very fortunate by the grace of God to have an office also in my home. So I did it from here tonight. We've been running all day trying to catch up on stuff because it was, uh, well, you know, it was conference time, and we had church on Sunday, church on Sunday night, church on Saturday, church on Friday night, church on Wednesday, and church on Tuesday. So I'm going to tell you what, man, we've been we've been having some church, even though we are the church, amen? But I want to talk about seeing seeing everything from God's perspective. You know, our choices are very critical in our lives. We make very serious choices, very powerful choices. Those choices set forth our destiny. So I want you to, if you would, go to Galatians chapter 5 in your Bible. And I want you to understand something. Walking in the Spirit and walking in the flesh are two ways of thinking. You have to get that. They're two ways of thinking. Are you thinking by the Spirit, the mind of God, or are you thinking by the flesh, your carnal mind? Because the way you think will dictate the decisions you make. Amen? They'll determine whether you are successful or fail in life by your decisions. That's why God told us, choose life or choose death. Amen? The flesh can be defined, let's say it this way, the flesh can be defined as a way of thinking that is opposed to God's word. So in every place that you think in a fleshly realm or in the fleshly way, it may very well be opposed to God's word and pretty much is in about 99.9% .9 of the time. Amen? So we have to understand that. To walk in the spirit means to think in line with the word of God it is up to us to make those decisions which mindset we'll embrace, amen? I know many, many times in my life as I've grown with God, I've changed in the way I've done things. I've changed the way I've answered questions or that was asking me. I've changed in the way that I, I approach people. I've changed in the way I look at buying things. To look, or I've changed in the way that I perceive people. I've learned to be swift to hear and slow to speak in many areas of my life. Because the reality is, I want to make sure that I make the right choice. I used to be a fly-by-night, do-it-quick kind of guy. You know, hey, it's Friday night, let's go out. Never considering that I had bills to pay. And then I'd go out back in the day, and I'd spend all my money, and I wouldn't have money to pay my bills. So understand how critical choices are, amen? I want you to look at Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 16. I'm going to read this and amplify it. Uh, here in my office at home, I've got four monitors here. So I've got TV monitors all over the place in my office here because we also own a graphic design business and we do graphics. So we, uh, I work a lot of times out of my office. So I have TV screens in front of me and where I'm using the, the laptop tonight to come to you on Facebook instead of our TV cameras at church. 
I've got TV screens behind it, TV screens beside me on both sides. So I've got scripture verses up everywhere, and I'm looking at the shadow of myself over here on the right to make sure everything's coming out properly, that you can hear me good. So even though we're here, we're functioning very well to make sure everything is covered properly. So anyway, Galatians 5.16 in Amplified says this, But I say walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him and be responsive to His guidance. In other words, we we got to listen for the Holy Spirit. What He wants to do, how He wants to do it. Many times throughout the day, God will be talking to us and we won't even be listening. We'll miss a blessing because we're not listening to God. Amen? Let me go on. It says, And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which responds without regard for God and His precepts. Because in our sinful nature, that's what we do. We begin to look at things through the world's eyes instead of God's eyes. And we want to look at things through God's eyes. Amen? So the blessings of God reside in the spirit realm. We have to understand it. The blessings of God reside in the spirit realm. Amen? And that's where we want to operate out of, the spirit realm. You know, when we got uh, teaching on Sunday morning and Sunday night, Sunday morning at church, I taught on the supernatural realm. Now, we had a prophetic conference, so we was talking about the prophetic. We, we flowed in the prophetic. We flowed in signs and wonders. We saw many people hit by the power of God. Like I said, when we got there Sunday night, the glory of God was waiting on us. And now when I say the glory, understand something. The word glory is the kabod, the weightiness. I mean, the, the presence of God was so thick. Some people couldn't function under that presence. It was just too much. I was myself getting in such a place with God that I had to stay focused on what I was doing because God's presence was so strong. So you have to realize that. And that's what we want. We want to operate out of the spirit realm because in the spirit realm is where everything happens. Amen? You can bring the spirit realm into the natural realm and watch God do the supernatural. Amen? That's why we had people, like I said, on Sunday night, man, wow. Before service started, back in our overflow unit right there, a room where we have where we just... It's an overflow. We're just got a you know a couple of chairs, several chairs. You relax before service. People, it was all they could do to hold their self up. It was all they could do. We were laughing in the spirit. God was just touching people. It was awesome. I've had many of our people in our church tell me, "Man, I needed that, Pastor Apostle. That was awesome, man. We needed that move right there." So just know there's a place in God you want to go and you want to be, but you have to see things from God's perspective. Amen. Look at Ephesians. For me, if you would, chapter one, verse three, I want to go through this because it says, blessed, the blessings of God reside, they reside on the inside of the spirit realm. They're on the inside of you. We got to get this thing going. It says, blessed and worthy of praise be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms in Christ. What did he leave out? Nothing. Nothing. You know, we're, we're very close-knit body here at Messengers of Fire Ministries and I'll get called from some of my spiritual daughters or my spiritual sons and they'll come and say, hey dad awesome what God did today you know, blah blah blah, I got a raise we have one daughter that's in uh, uh, Florida, I think she's had like seven raises this year I mean just the blessings of God are just overtaking her, that's what you want and what I want, we want God's blessings to overtake us we have enough to deal with in life that we need to make the changes so we affect life instead of life affecting us. Amen? So to be blessed is to be empowered for success. To be blessed is to be empowered for success. God empowers you for success. He wants you to prosper as your soul prospers, your mind, your will, your emotion. God doesn't want you going around being tormented. I, I hear people tell me they're tormented. I'm telling you, God does not want you to be tormented. God is a God of peace, not a God of torment. So we have to get in those places with God that bring that peace that surpasses understanding. Jesus said it. He said, I leave a peace with you, not that the world gives you, I give you. The world can't understand the peace you walk in. It doesn't understand the favor you walk in, the glory of God that you walk in, or the faith that you walk in. The world doesn't understand that. Only you and God understand that because you walk with God. You walk with the Lord. So to be blessed is to be empowered for success. So when God saves you, fills you with his Holy Spirit, he has instantly empowered you for success. People tell me that they, 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 
they feel like they can't be successful in life. You're more than a conquering God. Christ has already overcome the world, and then he's empowered you to do what he's already done, overcome the world. Yes, we will have trials and tribulations. It says that. But God says you're more than a conqueror. Amen? So let's understand it. To be blessed is to be empowered for success. To be cursed is to be empowered to fail. Well, we don't want to be cursed. We want to be blessed. Amen? Because to be blessed is to be empowered for success. To be cursed is to be empowered to fail. God doesn't make us failures. He makes us conquerors. We triumphed in Christ. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. The anointing empowers us for victory. The anointing empowers us to conquer sin, hell, death, and the grave. The anointing destroys sin in our lives. Amen? Fulfilling the lust of the flesh is simply acting out of sinful thoughts and emotions. You have to understand that. <laughs> Fulfilling the lust of the flesh is just simply acting out sinful thoughts and emotions. That's why our thoughts are so so important that we have to take authority over our thoughts. We have to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ and anything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Amen? There, therefore, there's a root of all sinful actions, which is very simple. All sinful actions, the root to it is sinful thinking. Isn't that simple? Simple thinking is the root to simple actions. Because simple actions begin to, to, to move on your emotions. And they get you to think about it. You know, I was hooked on certain things in my life. I, was, I, I drank. And my thing, one of my addictions in that time was very simple. It wasn't necessarily alcohol. It was just the idea of when I drank, I drank. It didn't matter if it was a Coke, if it's water, uh, if it's tea, if it's latte. Uh, what it was, it didn't matter. I'm a person when I drank, I drank. So drinking something that was not good for me did not become an asset to me. It became a detriment to me because that, that I was drinking and choosing to drink it, drinking it could hurt me. So the addiction was, I like to drink. Now, I drink water. This got lemon in it. So drinking lemon water, it ain't going to hurt me. Don't clean my liver up real good, though. Amen? But if this wasn't water, and this was lattes that I used to drink, they put a lot of weight on me. If it was alcohol, they'd end up making me an alcoholic and make me drunk. Because that old nature... The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and all those things. The boastful proud life. Satan operates in those realms. Satan operates in the realms of unforgiveness and bitterness and selfishness. Pride and greed. That's where he operates in. That's his realm. God operates in love and peace and kindness and gentleness and goodness and temperance and faith. God operates in a totally different realm. One realm will destroy you. One realm will, one realm will advance you. One realm will heal you and deliver you. The other realm will destroy you. Which one will you choose? Because you have to choose the realm you want to live in. Amen? Fulfilling the lust of the flesh is simply acting out of sinful thoughts and emotions. So listen. Therefore, the root of all sinful actions is fleshly thinking. You have to think about it before you do it. You think about it. You make a choice. This is why we're talking about choices. Choices are so critical. You have to choose life or death, blessing or cursing. Amen? Walking in the Spirit is a way of thinking. Walking in the, in, excuse me, walking in the flesh is a way of thinking that opposes God's Word. It's contrary to God's Word. Amen? In some places in the Bible, the flesh refers to the physical body. Amen? Walking in the flesh is a way of thinking that opposes God's word. But remember I said, some places in the Bible, it refers to, refers to the flesh. Some places in the Bible, it refers to the mind. Fleshly thinking. Amen? Amen? God good? 
It's seeing yourself, let's say it this way, it's seeing yourself as the world sees you are from man's point of view. Amen? Walking in the flesh is a way of thinking that opposes God's word. And listen to what it does. It's, it is seeing yourself as the world sees you. Seeing yourself as the world sees you. Or I can say, from man's point of view. Amen? It is a mindset that has not been renewed and transformed by the Word of God. It's a mindset that's not been renewed or transformed by the Word of God. We must have our minds transformed. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who did not consider it robbery to be created equal to what? God himself. Because in order to walk like God, act like God, and be like God as a son and daughter, you have to think like God thinks. You have to know how God wants you to do things, how God wants things done. You have to spend that time with God. Amen? God is good. I want to take a moment. I want to thank everybody that's watching and listening. Hey, give us an amen at the bottom of the screen. Praise God. Uh, I know my wife's on here. Uh, Prophetess Janet, she's on here. And I know if you're chatting back and forth on there, she's on there having a good time with you, telling you how we love you. We thank you for joining us. We pray these teachings we do on Tuesday night will help you in your mindset to change the way you think, to change in your choices, the way you to make choices. Because we all make them. We, we all don't. And I don't want you to listen. I don't want you to beat up on yourself when you make a bad choice. Because anytime you make a bad choice means there's an opportunity to change it to make a good choice. So instead of beating up on yourself, just make a different choice. And go to God's word. Spend time in the word of God. Spend time with the Lord. Find out what the Lord has to say to you. God wants you to be led by the spirit. Amen. It's very important to be led by God's spirit. So let's remember what he said. It's a mindset that has not been renewed. When you're operating out of fleshly mindset, it's a mindset that's not been renewed. Amen. So, and, and it's opposed to God's word. You ever had someone come up and they'll say something and it smacks your flesh real bad? And you're like, you really don't like it. And you're like, dang, man, that really bothered me what that man said. That hit hard. That's because there's something in you opposed to the word of God that came to you. Now, I'm going to tell you a story real quick. Many years ago, I was at a service and I preached. And this is way back. Man, it's probably 20 years ago. I was at a service and I ministered the word and I couldn't tell you the message I preached on, but I can tell you this much I do remember. A man came up to me afterwards. He said, he said, Brother Teddy, he goes, man, I just want to thank you. He said, you know, that was an awesome message you preached. That really helped me. I go, well, praise God, brother. I'm glad it helped you, you know, because that's what we're here for, to help you. He goes, I really appreciate it. Right after that, I had another guy come up. I'm kidding you not, man. Right after this guy walked up, this guy walked up. He goes, well, sir, I, I just want you to know, I appreciate you coming, but the message you preached, it condemned me. I felt condemned by you. I went, huh? He said, yeah. He said, no disrespect to you. He goes, but I just felt like the message you preached, I felt like I was condemned. I said, well, sir, I'm sorry you felt condemned because there's no condemnation in Christ. And I said, but thank you for coming. And he walked away. When he walked away, and I said, Lord, I don't get that. What just happened? That guy came here. The other guy came here. One guy said, thank you, brother, for an awesome word from the Lord. The other guy looked at me and said, I felt condemned. I, Lord, I don't get that. He said, well, the reason the second guy felt condemned is because he was in an adulterous affair on his wife, and I was convicting him by my spirit, and he rejected my conviction, and by a judge yourself condemned. I went, what? He said, now I'd like you to go tell him. And uh, I kind of got a little uh, shocked when God spoke that to me. I said, uh, didn't you already tell him, Lord? <laughs> you was convicted. <laughs> what? You done told him, what's he going to listen to me for? He said, I want you to go tell him. Now, I'm going to tell you something when I'm telling you these stories. This is true stories. He said, there ain't a bunch of humble jumbo stuff. This is real stuff that happened. Don't you do what I did unless you know you hear the voice of God. Because you're getting ready to have a serious thing happen if you don't know what you're doing. 
make sure you hear God's voice. Amen. I'm just, I'm just giving you a look. Make sure you hear, okay? So I walked over to the man. He was standing back in the crowd of people. I said, sir, can I have a minute of your time? He goes, yeah. So he stepped aside with me. I said, sir, you remember when you came to me earlier and you told me you felt condemned by the message I preached? He goes, yes, sir, I do. I said, the Lord spoke to me when you walked away. He goes, he did. I go, yeah. He said, or I said, the Lord told me that you're on an adulterous affair on your wife. And I, you know, we're away from everybody. Nobody's going to hear what I'm saying. He goes, who told you that? How'd you find that out? I go, sir, I just told you God told me that. I said, God tried to convict your heart. The reason you felt condemned is because the Holy Spirit was trying to convict you where you would repent, where God could deliver you from it. And he dropped to his knees and repented. That man went to his wife. Do you understand how powerful conviction is? Conviction is one of the most powerful things we possess in this world. It is the most powerful thing because without conviction, that means the Holy Spirit's not moving. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. The Holy Spirit brings healing. He brings deliverance. But he brings conviction so you can be delivered and you can be healed. So conviction comes to say, hey, don't do that no more. It's like the cop that gives you the warning. Instead of giving you the ticket, he gives you a warning saying, don't speed no more. The Holy Spirit comes to say, hey, don't make that choice again. That's a bad choice. Make a good choice. Amen? So anyway, I want you to understand that stuff. There's things like that that happen, and, and God does it. Thank God he does it in my life and your life. Thank God that the Holy Spirit loves us so much that he convicts us. He's our helper. He's the comforter. He's the one that comes to show us the things we need to do and the things we need to straighten up in our life so we can reap the benefits that God has for our lives. God has benefits for you. Amen? God wants you God wants you to look good. He wants you to look good. He wants you to look good. I mean, if you don't look good, you make God look bad. If I don't look good, I make God look bad. I want God to look good. God wants you to look good. How are you going to get people to want to have the Jesus you serve if the Jesus you serve can't want to even take care of you? So God wants you to make right choices by the word so you can get the right results you're looking for. Amen? I don't know where you're at in your walk after. I mean, I'm on, I'm on Facebook here. Coming to you live from my office and my home. But I want you to realize, there's some of you listening, you need to make some changes. There's areas God wants to work in your life to better your life. Amen? Anyway, it's seeing ourselves as the world sees us or sees you, I should say, or me, from a man's point of view. It's a mindset that has not been renewed or transformed by the Word of God. So walking in the Spirit is a way of thinking that lines up with the Word of God. Amen? Let's go real quick to John 6, 63. Amen? Let's go to John 6, 63 here. And let's look what it says. It is the Spirit that giveth life. The flesh profiteth what? Nothing. No benefit at all in the flesh. It is of no account. The words I speak to you are a spirit and they are life, providing, what? What is our word speak? That are life. They provide eternal life to you. Eternal life to me. So, so it's the spirit that's going to give us life. Why we want to hang on to the flesh, I'll never know. Because the very thing we hang on to is trying to kill us when the spirit's trying to bring life to us. Amen? So let's remember that. We need to know that, that, that the spirit is going to bring life to us. Amen? So the word is what makes, so the word of God is what makes us what? Spiritual. Someone asked me, how do you walk in the spirit? Walk in the word. That's simple. You walk in the word, you become spiritual. Amen. You walk against the word, you just stay fleshly. Very simple. People pick and choose the parts of the Bible they like or don't like. I like this part because I can get away with doing this, but I don't like that part over there. That part there means I got to die somewhere in my life. Brother Teddy, we're under grace. We are under grace. And grace is the power that God gave you to stop sinning. And without that grace, you and me will continue to sin forever. That grace comes from God. It's divine favor reflected in the life of the individual. It's God looking down on you and me and going, son, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. I don't want you to do what the world's doing. That's what's hurting the world. Don't do that, son. That'll hurt you like it does them. Because I can't be no respecter of person. If you want to keep doing that like the world does, it, you're going to get the same benefits. Because them are all choices. Amen? So you got to get a revelation of that. Amen? So the word is what makes us spiritual. There is no profit in the flesh. 
Walking in the Spirit will produce power, blessings, and life. Walking in the flesh will produce lack of power, curse, and death. Front row, back row, platform, it doesn't matter. God is no respecter of any person. If you walk in the Spirit, whether you're in the platform, not in the platform, it doesn't matter. Amen? Walking in the Spirit will produce power, blessings, and life. Walking in the flesh will produce lack of power, curses, and death. It doesn't matter how you look at it. We can put any words we want on it. You can get in your Bible and study it. I don't care what your denomination is. I don't care what your religion is. God has set things in motion that he will not change. You're not going to change gravity. God is sovereign. Nobody's going to change gravity. Gravity is going to be gravity forever. We're going to have to breathe and thank God for air. Because if God don't give us air, nobody's going to breathe. If God decides one day and goes, I'm pulling air out, we're all in trouble. Amen? Look at Deuteronomy 30. I quote this verse a lot because it's very important for people to sit. I'll read this in the Amplified. Amen? Deuteronomy 30, 19. And I hear people tell me, outside, but that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. Here's your revelation. 49% of the New Testament is the Old Testament. Don't think God did away with everything. He did away with the law, the rituals. That's what he gave, gave away or got away from, the rituals. That's all God got rid of, the rituals. Thou shalt not kill still stands today, just like it did back then, amen? So anyway, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth as a witness against you today that I have set before you life and death the blessing and the curse. Therefore, you shall choose life in order that you may what? Live. You and your what? Descendants. So for my children to live and your children to live and for you to live and I to live, we've got to make a choice, man. You know, I saw a commercial the other day. I was uh, sitting in my living room and uh, they I, I try not to watch a lot of TV to be honest with you. Because there's so much junk on there. You really got to be careful. But I was on there and they had this commercial come up about smoking cigarettes. This was this lady. She had a big, I don't know what this thing was. It almost looked like just a big tube with a cap on the end right in the middle of her throat. And she was doing a cigarette commercial of what smoking cigarettes it did to her. What don't we get in it, man? What 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 do we not get about what, what that lady was saying? She said, don't smoke cigarettes or you'll end up like me, she said. Do you know how many people probably never put their cigarettes down and saw that commercial? Well, Brother Teddy, you don't know how difficult it is to smoke. You want to bet? I smoked for 20 years. Thank God he set me free. And I smoked a whole lot more than cigarettes. So you have to understand something. You have to make a choice. I made a choice not to smoke. Where we as Christians think that it's okay to walk in sin, I'm not saying none of us without sin because we all got we all got sin, okay? Just because you got sin doesn't mean you got to operate in it. Amen? We, we're all being sanctified and purified on a daily basis. Moment by moment, we're being changed from faith to faith and glory to glory. A lot of that transformation be quicker if people would surrender faster. You know what I'm saying? A lot of transformation would be quicker if people would surrender faster. Some areas were quick to give up. Some areas were not. That's me, and I'm just as guilty as you in that area. I'm pointing ten fingers at me. But we have to make a choice in life. How long will we keep doing this before we reap the benefits of it that may not be good for our lives? That lady kept smoking those cigarettes. And what's sad is she's at a place now that she can't go back unless God supernaturally intervenes and heals her miraculously. And he can do that. God can do anything God wants. He's God. How far will you take God in your choices? How far will you let your choices take you before you make the changes that God has been trying to get you to make for years? And that's all of us, brothers and sisters. See, I, I don't believe people have to be sick. Because he sent his word to heal us. Have I ever been sick? Yeah, I've had a cold. Heck yeah, I've been sick. Caught flu? Yeah, absolutely. 
But I want you to realize something. I don't believe you have to be. Have I arrived? Absolutely not. Am I working on it? You better believe it. Every day, every day, something in my life changes. In my wife's life changes. In our ministry changes. I watch people, excuse me, I watch people in our ministry change on a daily basis. I watch our church in our body be blessed day in and day out where people call us and tell us about the miraculous things God's done in their life because they made a choice. Because they made a choice. Amen? <laughs> they made a choice. I just had one of my spiritual sons just get a brand new home. The odds of this man having a brand new home where he's had in his life are the supernatural power of God. Why? Because of where he came from. Five years ago, he had nothing. Nothing. And he began to make right choices. Got a good job, got a precious wife, beautiful children, got a beautiful home. God's working on his life, amen? And I could go on and on and on through each and every one of them, amen? So remember what Deuteronomy says, it says, heaven and earth is a witness. Let me ask you a question. The Lord just dropped this in my spirit. Are you setting creation free according to Romans chapter 8? Are you taking you deeper into bondage with creation? Hear me. Are you setting creation free? Because Romans chapter 8 tells us that creation is waiting on us for the manifestation of the sons of God to come forth. Why? Because the sons of God will set creation free according to Romans chapter 8. So as the Lord dropped into my spirit what he's talking, are you setting creation free? Or are you going deeper into bondage with creation? Because see, the world gets more wicked and as the world gets more wicked, creation does too. So you're either setting creation free or you're helping take it deeper into bondage. Which one are you choosing? Amen. Do me a favor. Go in your Bible to uh, Jeremiah 17. Amen. I hope you're learning something. I hope you're getting something. I'm not out here trying to condemn nobody. Listen to me, guys. I deal with me on a regular basis. I deal with my life. My wife deals with her life. Our body deals with it. We, we work as a team here. We're a team. And God wants you and I to be the best we can be for God. And if you're not going no further in your life, that means you've got to make some changes in your life. You've got to make choices that you've not wanted to make. Whether you wanted to or not, you've got to make them because it's the only way you're going to get to that next level in God. Amen? You've got to make those choices. So we have a right to choose our path. According to Scripture, we have a right to choose our path. Blessings are cursing. According to Deuteronomy 30, 19, 30, 19, it tells you what to do, how to do it, and then gives you the answer. I mean, come on, you talk about a test you should never flunk. Choose life, choose death. Here's the answer. Choose life. I mean, come on, man. How good can God make it for us? How easy did God make it? Simplicity of devotion to Christ. Amen. So you got to realize we have a right to choose our path. Many years ago, I was... Uh, in my sister's house, and I feel like I need to share this for some of you in there. I was in my sister's house, and she wanted all of her children saved, and her daughter was there, and she was with her boyfriend at that time, and their husband and wife got married, they ended up getting married, and then there was another couple with her, and and uh, I kind of was, the way I worked with them was a little different, because you, you just can't go up to people and say, you know, you need to say, get saved, or you're going to go to hell. You don't do that. Got to learn to use wisdom, but I sat there with them, and as I was sitting there with them, I uh, I noticed that uh, they were all grouped on the couch, so I began to speak to them about Christ, and, and, and make a long story short, at the end, I led them all to Christ, and I prayed for them all, and when I was praying for all of them, there was uh, the one young man who was married to my niece. He had a massive encounter with God. I mean, this guy went out in the spirit of God for about 35 minutes. The guy that was with him and the friends that were with him, they, they didn't know what happened. That, 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 he's like, oh my gosh, he's still out. I go, yeah. I mean, they all got touched by God. But about 35 minutes later, he finally came to and he had this look like he was astonished at what just happened to him. And I kept asking him, I said, what, what's going on with you, man? What's going on with you? And he just looked. He, he, you ever been around people, guys, where you look and they're just like they're looking, but they're not there? So what do you look like? 
Finally, we got him to his senses, and I said, what happened? He goes, it was God. I go, well, what did God say to you? He goes, it's what he showed me. He showed me when I got older, as an old man, blessed by him, that I'd live a long life, and I'd walk with him. I go, awesome, that's phenomenal. He said, then he also showed me another path. So he showed you two paths, yeah. And the other one, I would die very young because I would go the way of the world. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, if I want life, I choose God and I'll live a long life and I'll prosper. But if I don't, when I get older, I'll die very young because of choosing the world and the ways of the world. Now, man, let me tell you something. That's prophetic. He told me that, and when he said that, cold chills went up and down my spine. And I said, well, at least he gave you the answer. Choose life. Isn't it amazing how God gives all of us the answer, but yet we refuse the truth? Because it means we have to make a choice to change. I have to make those choices just like you do on a daily basis. I have to make choices if I'm going to go out, if I'm going to stay home, if I'm going to get up, if I'm going to go to bed. If, you know, what I'm going to do that day, I have to make choices. So I pray after this message, you'll start to make the choice to not only see things from God's perspective, but also to walk in your new life with God from God's perspective. Amen? Anyway, God's given us hints. He's told us to choose life, okay? Let's look at Jeremiah 17, verse 5 here real quick. I got to watch out which thing I'm grabbing here. I've got, I've, got, I've got mouses all over the place here. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 7. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts and relies on mankind, making weak, faint, human flesh his strength. That's what he said. Making weak, faint, human flesh his strength his strength and those minds and hearts turn away from the lord why because they let their their flesh become their strength if you let that old character and old nature control you that nature will destroy you it will take you back into the ways of the world that's why the parable of the Lord of seed says that says you know trial and tribulation come and it, it talks about for lack of this and lack of that, they went right back. They went back. When the cares for deceitfulness, for riches and all this stuff and all the cares of the world come on, they go back to the world. Because they didn't change their mindset. They didn't change the way they thought. Amen. Look at verse 6. For he will be like a what? A stub in a parched desert and shall not see prosperity when it comes, but shall live in the rocky places of the wilderness in an uninhabited, salted land. Do you see any life in that? No life. Choosing the ways of the world and the ways of the flesh will always lead you into the, to the wilderness and leave you there to die. But look at verse 7. Blessed with spiritual what? Security. Spiritual security. Praise God. God is going to bless us with security. Awesome. You know, in our church, we have a security system. What? To watch for unwanted people or unwanted things to happen. We're watching. So understand it. Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts and relies on the Lord. Hallelujah. And whose hope and confidence is what? And expectation is what? In God, in the Lord. God's got this. He's got you, amen? He loves you. He wants the best for you, amen? Our ability to walk in the spirit or in the flesh depends on the way we think. It's never changed. In the garden, Adam and Eve, the choice they made is what caused them to be kicked out of the garden. The choices we make is the choices that cause us not to reap the benefits that God has for us. Man, I find the more we serve God and the more we do as God wants us to do. And we're not talking about works. We're talking about a relationship. Man, the blessing of God just overtakes you. Sometimes we just cry around here because like, oh my gosh. Do you know how hard it is to find places that got the presence of God in them? Man, we are blessed. 
you know how awesome it is to look over my people and see the glory of God all over them and they can't even stand under his presence because his glory's on them when I know where those people came from those people were like you and me that came from the world and their lives were falling apart and now God is all over their lives and blessing them from from every they're blessing them all around in every way new homes new cars and it's not about that stuff but the main thing is he's blessing them physically spiritually and financially Glory be to God. Give God glory. Amen. Understand some Our ability to walk in the spirit or in the flesh depends on our thinking. Manifestations of a fleshly way of thinking. Here's what it includes. You hear me? I'm going to give you some things it includes. Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness. Licentiousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Wrath, strife, heresy. I could go on and on and on and on and on. Unforgiveness, bitterness. Those are the benefits of the flesh. Why would we ever want that? Amen. Go to Second Corinthians, if you would, and let's look at. Uh, I gotta find out which mouse I'm grabbing here. <laughs> Second Corinthians, chapter ten, please. I want to look from three to five, if you don't mind. Chapters three, uh, chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. Amen. Let's read this here. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to what? What are we to bring it to? The obedience of Christ. You know, I used to teach my guys this. They would ask me, oh, Brother Teddy, it, Pastor, it looks like when you fast, you make it look easy. No, I don't. I'm just a man, just like anybody else, filled with the Holy Ghost, living by the grace of God. But they go, you make it look easy. I go, let me, let me give you a revelation. Sometimes I have to go three to four weeks to prepare myself not to eat. Why? I have to battle the carnal thinking in my mind. Because I'll thank the devil to bring me. Well, yeah, but thank you're going to give up this. And it, I guarantee this always happens to me. I learned this early in my walk with God. When I first got saved, God put me on a seven-day fast. And in that seven days, had me prepare dinner for ministers for seven straight days. But here's what it was interesting. Every time I fasted, someone always offered me out for a dinner. Every time I went inside of the fast. Now, they didn't know it. Bless their heart. They're trying to give me a blessing. They want to take me out to dinner. But every time in my life, pretty much I fasted, someone's always said, hey, we stink about and invite you and your wife out for dinner tonight. I look at Jenna and I'd say, my gracious, boy, you talk about temptations. We do it all the time. I remember being in a major fast one time and I had, I had a bunch of brothers going to fast with me and I told them don't go in the fast. They did it anyway. I said, guys, I'm telling you, I'm going this fast. If God ain't telling you, don't go in it. Well, a couple of them, they wanted to do it. Well, what happened was there was, there was holidays coming up. So guess what happened? They all stepped out of the fast when they were supposed to stay in the fast. I had a couple guys call me and go, Brother, I need you to forgive me because I uh, uh, I kind of stepped out of that fast. Made a bad choice. Not to get out of the fast. The bad choice was they never should have got in it. They did it by the flesh, not by the spirit. When you go fasting, you got to make sure it's the spirit. So you got to get rid of all that carnal stuff in your mind. Amen. So that you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Amen. By the way, guys, you can always look for us. We're always on Facebook, just to let you know. We're also on Twitter. We're on LinkedIn. We're on YouTube. Our website's up there, www.messenger of the Fire Ministries. We have all of our teachings up there. You can find you can find us on Facebook with teachings. I mean, man, we got teachings galore about everything you can think of because we deal a lot with the mind and stuff. So we want you to be a success in God. So just know that stuff is up there if you need it. Amen. And hey, if you're out here in, in Crestwood, come visit us. Hey, man. 7025 Hughes Avenue, Crestwood, Kentucky, 40014. Hey, Amen. We'd love for you to come and be a part of us. Be a part of us worshiping God together, man. We'll have a good time in the Holy Spirit when you come. I guarantee God will show up. One guy asked me one time, he said, Brother, how do you know God will show up? I said, well, if God don't show up, I'm leaving myself. Why well, do I want to hang out here if God ain't here? Amen. So do me a favor. Go to Romans chapter 8. Let's go on and get through this message. Praise be to God. I hope we're being of some help to you tonight. Amen. Got to understand something. I gave you examples. Amen. 
For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but mighty God tear down strongholds. Amen. We just read it. Amen. The devil knows, the devil has, I should say, the devil has no power over us. He has no power over us. His most powerful weapon, and I've stated this forever, is suggestion. He'll make a suggestion to you. See, you can't do that. I know you want to, but you can't do that. What if you do that? What if you what if you get a headache? What if you what if this happened? What if that happened? What if what if you what if what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? That's his name. What if, what if, what if is what we ought to call him. What if, what if, what if, what if God shows up? What if you make that right choice and because of that right choice where the enemy tries to get you to make a bad choice, you find out God's got a major blessing for you, amen? I've watched God take me and do things and have me go to places that I would have never went. And when I got there, there was always a blessing waiting on me. So know that in your right choices, there's blessing waiting on you, amen? So the devil has no power over us. His only power or his only weapon is a suggestion, amen? Find a more uh, influential or stronger than ourselves to motivate you to change. You've got to find something that gives you some power to want to change. I've always used my kids, my grandchildren. I want to be the best in God I can be because I want my grandchildren to always have someone they know that followed the Lord Jesus Christ. You're the greatest example to your children of God. Your errors, they'll see. The good points in you, they'll see. But they always point out the errors most. Well, Mom, you did it. And what do we always say? Or Dad, you did it. We tell them, don't smoke. And then we'll puff a cigarette. Don't drink. And we'll turn up a, a drink. Amen. So you got to make those changes for your children too. Amen. You do it for your love, for God, and for your wives and your children. You walk that walk with integrity and character. Amen. Anyway. Conquer, conquering the flesh by change your think by changing your thinking. You conquer the flesh by changing your thinking. You have to make that choice though. You can't say I'm going to quit doing something and keep thinking about it. Well, I don't think I'll go to the bar tonight and then you turn the TV on and you're going to every commercial about the bar that you don't want to go to. Or I'm going to quit eating and everything you're watching is showing food. Probably is not going to be a benefit unless you're really strong in your mind. So you, you, you got to know. You got to <laughs> conquer the flesh by changing your thinking. Amen. Renew your mind with the word of God. Many times when I go through situations in my life, and my wife can tell you this, I got this little headband that I wear. I probably should have brought it in here. It's been a nice thing to show you. I put it on at night. I listen to the word a lot. I put it on, and it's got Bluetooth in it, so I can listen to the word all night. And it never leaves my head because it's, it's in a Bluetooth. And a lot of times when I go through battles and stuff, I'll put that on. And I'll just listen to the Word. And I'll just let the Word of God drown at anything in my mind that's not of God. And it works. It just works. Why? Because He sends the Word to heal you. God's got a peace, so the Word of God's going to heal you. We minister the Word. Sometimes people fall asleep, man. Amen? We get so much peace in our home, sometimes we're both asleep. Amen. So understand what I'm saying. So you got to understand something. Renew your mind with the word of God. The enemy wants you to hold. Or let me say it this way. The enemy wants to hold us back by contaminating the way we think. He does it with TV, with movies. Man, he does it any way he can. Hanging out with people that, that don't do what they should be doing and don't act the way they should be acting. Next thing you know, you're acting like them. Next thing you know, you wasn't cussing, and all of a sudden, now you're cussing. You was not doing bad at all. Next thing you know, you're, you're operating in anger. You're like, man, why am I angry? Because you've been hanging out with everybody that's angry. So just saying, understand it, amen? So we got to understand, the enemy wants to hold us back, and the way he does is by con contaminating our thinking, amen? Look at Romans 8, and I want to start at verse 1, amen? Romans 8, verse 1. And I want to read down through here for you. I want you to listen to what I'm reading. Amen? There is therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh. So if we walk according to the flesh, is there condemnation? Absolutely. We find ourselves guilty. 
But look what it goes on. It says, but according to the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. So the power that sin has over you, Jesus conquered. The power that sin had over me, Jesus conquered. I have to set my mind with what Jesus has already done for me and begin to reap the benefits of it. Amen. Isn't that good? God is good. He wants you to have the best of me too. Look at verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. I'm not, let me give you an understanding of this. I don't know what you've heard, but this is pretty plain. He condemned sin. Okay? Instead of sin killing him, he killed sin. Well, the Spirit of God's in you and me, and we should be killing sin just like Jesus killed it. In other words, you got more power over sin because sin's done been destroyed. But you've got to make a choice to deal with sin. Amen? So it says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the Spirit on the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnal-minded is death, but to be spiritually-minded is life and peace. Spiritually minded, what's it tell you? It promises you. Life, peace. Life, peace. You can't separate them. If you walk it, you're going to get peace. It's a guarantee. It's a promise. God's word can't lie. Amen? Be life and peace. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, which means it's at war. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is just simple, man. Making a choice. Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, here's a key. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. For if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Christ, or raised Jesus, I should say, from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. Is this plain? If I obey God and God's word and do it the way God says to do it, the spirit is a promise that he'll bring life to my body, life to my mind, life to my soul, my mind, my will. He'll bring me to life if I begin to set my mind on the things that are above. I begin to operate from the supernatural realm instead of this worldly fleshly realm. Amen? Finish up here with verse 12 and 13. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh. Some people act like they're indebted to the flesh. You don't know the flesh nothing. Amen? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. So we don't have to, we're not in debt to it. We don't, it doesn't own us no more. We're born again. The debt was paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know nothing to the devil no more. Or to this world no more. Jesus paid your debt. He paid my debt. For if you live according to the flesh, you'll what? Die. It's plain and simple. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll what? Live. Think about it. Put to death the deeds of the flesh, you'll what? Live. How, how simple is this? Make a choice. Choose to be a drunk. Choose to stay sober. Choose to be an adulterer. Choose not to be an adulterer. Choose to serve God. Choose not to serve God. Choose to be a fornicator or not be a fornicator. Choose to be a liar or not to be a liar. Choose to watch filth or not to choose to watch filth. I mean, this is simple math, man. Why do we choose the wrong things? Because we choose to feed the flesh instead of the spirit. Amen? So we got to keep our mindset on the things above, higher things that are in line with God's word. That's what we got to do. Amen? We got to do it. Those who walk after the flesh can't please God. The Bible tells us plainly. Their carnal mind is what? It's at enmity. It's at war with God. We must change our ungodly mindset or we will die spiritually. If we don't change our mindset, we'll die spiritually. We'll be taken back into Egypt. Amen? Right actions do not bring us into right thinking. Right actions do not bring us in the right thinking. You've got to get this. Right actions do not bring us in the right thinking. 
but right thinking will bring us into right actions. Hear me. Right actions do not bring us into right thinking, but right thinking will bring us into right actions. You cannot put the cart before the horse. You have to get the right mindset so you can get the right result. Amen? Amen? Let's finish up here. We'll finish right up here in Colossians chapter 3. I hope you're getting something out of this. Praise be to God forevermore. Amen? Hope you're learning something, getting something from God to make you more than a conqueror that you already are. Amen? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, this is an Amplified, sharing in his resurrection from the dead. Keep seeking the things that are what? Above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep your focus habitually on the things above. What? Meditate on these things of pure, noble, just, praiseworthy. If there are anything, epistle, whatever, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. Not the things of the world. Not on your bills. Not how much you owe. What you should have did. What? Meditate on these things that are above. Amen? Set your mind and keep your focus on the things above. The heavenly things. Not on things that are on the earth which have only temporal value. And that's the key. We're dealing with an eternal destiny. An eternal life that God has called us into. God has called you higher. Higher. Into higher places in the spirit. To do greater things than you'd ever done on this earth. But you've got to let that change be made. So we got to keep our mindset on the things above, on the higher things that are in line with God's word. Amen. When we keep our mind on higher things, we will have higher results in our life. When we keep our mind on higher things, we will have higher results in our life. Amen. When we make right choices, we'll get good results. You make bad choices, you're going to get bad results. I want to go back to an action that we have because this is important. And we're just, we're right here at time, right on the money. Uh, if you want to type something down or you have a question, I'll try to answer it. I got Pastor Janet on the phone watching what's going on on here. If you have a question or you need something answered, I'll do my best to answer it for you if I can. But I want you to get this. Right actions do not bring us into right thinking. Some people try to do the right thing but they've never changed their heart or their thinking. So what they're trying to do can become a success. So understand that right actions do not bring us into right thinking, but right thinking will bring us into right actions. See, as a man thinketh, so is he. So I have to change the way I think so that I can get the result that I'm looking for in this life. This isn't rocket science, people. This is not rocket science. Many of the afflictions that we have in our life is because of our choices. Don't misunderstand me. The devil does his part. He tempts us. He entices us. He'll bring stuff to us. But we're still the people making the choice. So we have to make the right choices so that we can get the right result from God that we're looking for. God put it in our hands. You know, I remember uh, years ago when the Lord was teaching me something about Noah and Moses and different things. But I remember, I thought it was interesting. I shared this Wednesday or Sunday night at church. I used some of these things over and over. But I remember Moses standing there at the sea. And, you know, you, you, got, you got Pharaoh and all the ones coming towards him. And you got the people there. They're all upset. One minute they're happy that God's working on their lives. Next minute they're mad at Moses and they're mad at God. And, you know... One minute, oh, God is great in this, and they're going to build idols to him and all that kind of stuff. Next minute, they want to kill Moses. And, you know, why did you bring me out of here? Why didn't you leave me back in Egypt? Because at least they fed me there, you know, and blah, 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 blah. That's people. That's the way we are in the flesh. Amen. But I thought it was interesting when Moses began to speak to the Lord about the sea. And God told Moses, he said, you parted. Now, I don't know about you. But I have never parted a sea. I've seen God do the miraculous. I've seen dead people raised, blind eyes open, legs grow, blah, cancer, AIDS, all that. I've seen people here. I've seen all kinds of cool stuff. But I have never parted a sea. 
And guess what? Before God told Moses, he never parted a sea. But he had to get his mind where his mind needed to be so that he could see the, the result he wanted to see. And that could only take place with God. So you have to realize that. God has great things for you and me. And he wants great things for us. And he wants nothing but the best for us. But we have to make the choices that we need to make to get the result we're looking for. So you have to make those choices. I pray today that you'll choose life. You'll choose blessing and not cursing. I pray you'll be like me. You'll make that right choice. And that you'll do the thing you're supposed to do that God wants you to do so that you can be the best you can be in God. Amen. But only you can make those choices. I can't make those choices for you. So just remember, Moses was told by God, he said, you parted. And Moses did. See, God's given you and I everything we need. He's given us the precious Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. He's the guide. He's the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of wisdom, knowledge. He's the spirit of all the supernatural realm. He's the spirit that controls all the gifts. He has given us everything we're ever going to need in life to be a success in God. But you and I got to make that choice. We got to make that choice to let him be God in our lives. And no one can do that for you just as no one can do that for me. We have to make that choice. Just like Moses had to make that choice to, to, do right, to have right thinking so he could get the action he was looking for, the result. Because once you get your mind set, everything else has to line up with it. You know, we all have battles. I have my own battles. But I can tell you this from assurance. Everything I've ever conquered was because I set my mind right and then everything else had to line up with it. It had no choice but to line up with it. So till we meet next Tuesday, I hope you come see us on Wednesday night. Church starts tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Remember, we're in Crestwood, Kentucky. Love to have you. Praise God. Uh, you can always catch us. Like I say, you can find us on Facebook. I'll put this up here where you can see it, where we're at. You can always find us on Facebook. You can check us out there. If you like, you can also find us also on LinkedIn. We're on LinkedIn, like I told you earlier, in the service. And you can find us on Twitter. And you can also find us, like I told you, you can find us on, on YouTube. We're on, man, we're everywhere. We're all over the planet. Our website's www.messengers of fire ministries, right here in Crestwood, Kentucky. We'd love to have you come fellowship with us on Wednesday night. We start at 7. Sunday service is a little different. We have it at 1. We like to let people get a little sleep on Saturday because they've worked a hard week and we don't want to make them get up early. Nothing wrong with people that have early service. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. We just set ours at one. It gives people time to, to get a little sleep and rest before they get right up and have to start another week out. Service starts at one. We'd love to have you. If you have a prayer request, please type it in the bottom there at Facebook. We'd be more than happy to put you on a prayer list. We pray every day. Praise God. Hey, if you like worship, hey, every Friday night, Friday night, 7 o'clock at the church. Three hours of pure worship. Pure worship. Intimacy with God. Nobody's giving a message. We're just going to worship God. You come in, the music stays going for three hours. There's sometimes we ain't got out there at 11 o'clock at night and it starts at 7 o'clock. I mean, God has showed up. Six. Or excuse me, I apologize. My wife correct me. It starts at 6. There's times we haven't got out there at 11 o'clock at night because the presence of God is so strong. It's a, you know, you know, it's when you're in church, you're worshiping, and when you're worshiping, you're like, golly, man, they just stopped the music, and you're going to preach the word, and I was just getting into it. You don't have to worry about that on Friday. Friday is just pure worship. Just come and worship God, man. You find a corner, you can do whatever you want, let the Holy Spirit move, just come and enjoy the presence of God, amen. Friday night, 6 o'clock, Friday night at 6, Wednesday night, 7, Sunday at 1, and of course, every Tuesday right here, by the grace of God, we'll continue to teach on the choice Please make a good choice. Make a right choice. And those choices will be made correctly when you get the right mindset. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who did not consider robbery to be created equal with God. And remember, Jesus is Lord, if you let him be. Amen. We hope to see you tomorrow night. God bless you. Until then, remember, Jesus is Lord.